Come here, I wanna let you guys in on a secret. Behind this door, we're not going to give you the address. This is a secret location in Toronto that is hiding one of the best kept secrets, and we're gonna let you in. Anybody home? Who oh, is it? Uh, oh, you're here! Yeah. Yes, that is Jim Cuddy of the Jim Cuddy Band and Blue Rodeo. Hello, oh, finally! We've been waiting so long. Come on in. Today, we are getting an exclusive look of their studio. No all right, so this is your guys. Okay, so this is the studio, but first yeah. of all, you have to see this. This is a good one. So this, this is Greg and Alice Cooper okay. from the Junos. Rock uh, on. That is, that is, and it's our, our pipe organ here. So this is functional, but, but difficult. Has it ever appeared on an album, though? Yes, it has. Yep, okay. yep, it has. But it's just a little out of tune, so you have to do a lot of, a lot of tunage. Okay. So basically what we have is we have a big open space and the con we don't have a separate control room, which is okay. unusual yeah. for, for studios. So usually what you do is you have a, a, a control room and then all the recordings on the other side. We hated being on the other side, recording something and looking at glass, soundproof glass, and having them talk not and say, them. was that good? Are we ready to go? And they go, just a sec. Anything? They're not talking <laughs> about what I've just done. Every single nook and cranny is, is uh, is wired so in other words although this is the bathroom this is also where we put the bass amp oh. here's the bass amp oh. in there oh, okay. right you know a lot of what we did is was sort of the long game was we wanted to make sure we were just comfortable mm -hmm. we we didn't know what this place would sound like we built it right i mean there was a big big cinder block building but we built the inside we built it so that it's a it's a whole box inside a box so there's one more thing Okay. Come with me. <laughs> we had planned that, although our gear is in on the East Coast, um, we had planned that we could bring our bus in here and just load up from here, oh, right? But it, it, it won't quite make the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Rodeo is a part of Canada as much as maple syrup and hockey, but the original name of the group not so Canadian. I want to do a bit of a deep dive. I probably will get the name wrong, but Fly to France, was that? <laughs> okay. You got the name right. Um, how did you come up with that name for that little time? Okay, so time? We, were in a, we were in a little bit of a spin at that point. We had been the high fives in Toronto, and then we had changed, this was a, a Greg thing, to red, yellow, blue, which was a circle, square, and a triangle. And he felt that we didn't need to say a name, we were just represented with symbols, you know, before Prince. And uh, I just thought that was that was impossible because when we went down to New York, they said, we have a band, what's it called? Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we we were walking by a store and it had a it had a uh, an old a vintage poster that said "Fly to France," and we thought, well, that's kind of clever. That that's that's name it that. It was a, this the worst name. Have you seen it? There is a video out there of us as "Fly to France." I sure have. Oh, you have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that's you've seen a Steve yeah, Adorno with, with the awesome. drummer standing yes. up here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, with Fly to France, I feel like that <laughs> point of your time. I gotta you're, go back. I'm you're not letting it this go. One. Was there a moment in your career where you wore like the leather pants and a mesh <laughs> tank top? Because no, I feel no. what? No, no, but we did have one really bad. Oh, so you haven't seen anything? No, because we have one really bad one, and that was where we had a man. You know. It, you have to appreciate that at the beginning of your career, just the word means something to you. This guy says, I'm gonna manage you. We think, wow, we're gonna be managed. But that guy was a cameraman for a soap, like for all my children or something. He didn't know anything about managing. Anyway, what he wanted to do and what he put his money into is he bought us flight suits. So I don't think Greg wore it, I think Greg refused. <laughs> but the rest of us did a gig at CBGB's wearing the flight suits called Fly Friends. So Think you know everything about Jim Cuddy of Blue Rodeo? Well, Jim Cuddy doesn't even know everything about Jim Cuddy. I did a deep dive on the internet, and you won't believe some of the things we found out. I went online, and I find some facts that tend to be fiction on okay. the lovely internet. So, first of all, the little thing on Wikipedia. Did Blue Rodeo actually form in 1984? Yes. So three years? Okay. Fact. Fact. Were you a props guy for commercials? I was a props guy for commercials till just, I think, uh, 
till 89 or 90. So <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't give it up until I think January 1990. So we'd sold, we probably had sold a million and a half records by that point. So two facts, ding ding, right. You at one point were thinking of being a dental teeth model and for Colgate commercials. That is fiction. That is really? pure fiction. You threw look at that, that in I there. Did. Look at those you pearly threw whites. that in there. <laughs> those belong to my mother. She she went back to work to pay for pay for this, the braces. So thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. You perform with Meryl Streep, which mm -hmm. I know that is true. But are you guys in the actual movie at the end? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, so what happened was. We really got the call out of the blue, right? He said, uh, do you want to be in a movie with Meryl Streep? I'm like, okay. So we learned it the way they wanted it, which ballad, and then we learned it upbeat, fast. And they came up and we, we were at the Diamond Club. And uh, it was the day after the, I don't know what it was the day after, maybe the Country Music Awards, but I, I remember I was really hungover. And she'd come over when she wasn't filming and, and sing with us, sing the song. They just wanted it to be authentic that you were an amateur boxer. <laughs> you said that with such a good face. That's fiction. <laughs> I tried. Fiction. But well, right. you said it really well. Thank you.